This is OMS Voices and Amos Podcast. I'm Bill Klaproth, and with me is Dr. Aaron Sheffield, who is here to discuss dental extractions, infections, and the use of antibiotics. Dr. Sheffield, thank you for being here. Hi, Bill. Thanks for having me. You bet. So let's talk about this. Let me ask you this first. What are some common reasons for tooth removal? When does a tooth need to be extracted? Well, teeth are commonly removed for severe extensive decay, broken or severely fractured teeth, or a lot of people think about impacted wisdom teeth. Yeah, that's one of the, the common ones for sure. So what is a simple tooth extraction? A simple or routine extraction is essentially when we can just wiggle the tooth out. And that can often be done by either a gen- general dentist or family dentist or also by your oral surgeon. So that's like when you're a kid and you didn't want to go to the dentist to get your tooth pulled and you start eating apples. Come on, man. Just come out on on your own. No. Right. That would that'd be a simple home extraction, I guess. Yes. yes. Yeah. Or the old string on the door. Right. Which is really, nobody really does that, right? Uh, my mom used to do or, that. Yeah. Hey, Every what? once in a while it can work in the right patient. Wow. Okay. We are learning <laughs> things here today on the Amos podcast, people. So then what is a surgical tooth extraction? A surgical tooth extraction is a more difficult or complicated extraction, and it requires either an incision in the gum, removal of bone, or maybe cutting the tooth, or maybe all of those things. And then occasionally we will place sutures with those. I have a lot of patients who come to me and they, they say in frustration, like, why can't my dentist just do this? But your dentist is usually going to refer you to an oral maxillofacial surgeon if they have concerns about the complexity of the removal They want to ensure that the tooth is removed or managed with the highest level of expertise, and that's what we as oral maxillofacial surgeons can do. So when it comes to the simple extraction, if you will, generally a dentist can do that, wiggle it, and it'll come out. Is that right? Oftentimes, yes. Okay. So then how common are infections after a dental extraction, and what are the signs of an infection? Well, surprisingly, dental infections after oral surgery or tooth extraction is extremely rare. So unless they're extremely difficult extractions, something like deeply impacted teeth, or maybe you have a medical condition that makes you more prone to infection, maybe an autoimmune condition, most patients will not develop an infection after especially a simple extraction, and many won't even require an antibiotic. But it can happen, so there are some things to watch for. So really bad foul breath, more than just your normal you know, morning bad breath. <laughs> a really bad, bitter, or foul taste, and things like fevers, pain. Now, this is tricky. A lot of the signs of infection are similar to having the extraction out, so pain, swelling, things like that can develop just because you had surgery and from inflammation. But when those things are getting worse instead of getting better over time, those are all concerning. And then especially if you started having swelling into the neck or into the glands of the neck or, you know, extensive facial swelling. Those are all things that are concerning and you'd want to speak to your surgeon. Is there a time frame of that if it doesn't get better within a few days or a week? Is that when it's time to call the OMS? Yeah, I always tell my patients, you know, this pain and swelling after the surgery is going to get worse within about the first two to four days. So Mm -hmm. if you've got past that point and things are getting worse, that's definitely something we want to see or talk to. Absolutely. So then you did mention antibiotics. What role do antibiotics play in preventing infection? So antibiotics may be prescribed to patients undergoing extractions to prevent complications from infection or can be given after if an infection develops. And these antibiotics can be given either before, during, or after the surgery. There are certain kinds of antibiotics that are most effective. We call them beta, beta-lactam antibiotics. Uh, penicillin is one you think of most commonly, and these are considered to be the most effective antibiotics in preventing and treating dental or oral infections. So this is something that is really important to know. A lot of people are allergic to penicillin or, or actually think they're allergic to penicillin. Only about 1% of people who are allergic actually are. So This is difficult for us to sometimes treat these effectively or to prevent infections when you take an alternative one because you think you're allergic. So I always uh, encourage my patients, unless they've had a severe anaphylactic reaction to penicillins, to actually consider speaking to their physician or their allergist about allergy testing because this is really important information for their general health. Mm -hmm. 
So how do antibiotics generally work and what considerations will an OMS take into account when prescribing antibiotics? So antibiotics work by killing the bacteria that cause infections or by slowing their growth. But many times infections will clear up themselves. So I'll tell my patients, most, again, simple extractions, even if there was an infection in that tooth, will resolve on their own because the source, which was the tooth, has been removed. So it's kind of like if you had a splinter in your finger and it got a little irritated, inflamed, or infected. We could keep throwing antibiotics at it, but that's kind of silly. Once we get that splinter out, that infection will probably go away. And that's the same thing with our mouths. Most of the time, just getting the offending tooth out of there is going to take care of the problem. Do most people automatically ask for antibiotics? I think that there is a really big misperception out there that if you have oral surgery, you have to have an antibiotic. I've seen lots of comments maybe on social media or just patients talking to me who are surprised or even saying the wrong thing was done because they weren't prescribed an antibiotic. But the actual use of antibiotics in oral surgery is pretty low uh, for necessity. It's usually a low necessity. The other thing I see A lot of people will take them inappropriately. You know, you definitely want to be taking antibiotics as recommended by your doctor. You really don't want to find, you know, grandma's leftover Z-pack or something and take a day or so of that just because you think you have an infection. You know, if you take the antibiotics in a way that's not indicated, either the wrong one or for the wrong dose or the wrong amount of time, all those things can actually contribute to a bigger problem with infection, either for you or with antibiotic resistance in our community. Right. Stay away from Grandma's z pack Keep your hands off. Leave it in the cupboard. Grandma's z pack should have been used fully and gone anyway. <laughs> should never right. have been there for you to find. Yeah, Grandma should have thrown it out. She should have used it all until gone, which That's is usually right. how we prescribe That's them. That's right. So when should a patient see an OMS for dental extraction? I feel like people would be referred to the OMS. Do they go on their own? So occasionally people will self-refer to oral maxillofacial surgeon, people with like wisdom teeth that they know to come out. Those are easy for us to accept, but most of the time we do work on a referral basis. So I get a lot of patients who try to skip their general dentist and they want to just come straight to me or they want me to become kind of their primary care dentist. But most of the time we work on a referral basis simply because I want to know that they have seen the dentist, that they've come up with a good long-term plan for the tooth. They want to verify that the tooth actually does need to be removed before they come see me. All right. Well, this has been really interesting. Dr. Sheffield, thank you so much. So when it comes to dental extractions, infections, and the use of antibiotics, anything you want to add? I think what I would want patients to understand is that you may be surprised how rarely antibiotics are needed. So if you didn't receive an antibiotic, either with extraction or preventively, that doesn't necessarily mean something wrong or bad happened just because you'd received them before or heard about a friend who'd received them. Every case is different, and we really want to make those decisions carefully and from a data and research-driven approach. And so really talking to your surgeon is the best way to determine if you need to have an antibiotic or not. Right, because there is that perception, give me the antibiotic. Yes, and I think they are uh, actually quite often overprescribed in dentistry, and that's something that I'm a really big advocate for Mm -hmm. and that we're working to educate people on because we are seeing the negative effects that antibiotics can have either on single patients. You know, people don't always realize that there are complications or severe side effects that can happen with antibiotics. They're not without, you know, complication or risk. And also from a global health perspective, antibiotic resistance is on the rise and it is a severe threat that, you know, we can't quite Mm -hmm. fully comprehend, but we really want to be careful in the antibiotics we use and prescribe so that when we do have those serious infections, they will not become life-threatening because, Mm -hmm. you know, we've overused the antibiotics that we have. Yeah, good information and well said. Dr. Sheffield, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And once again, that is Dr. Aaron Sheffield. And for more information in the full podcast library, please visit myoms.org. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening.